hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> When you're gonna do it, hey? We're not talking questions like what your usual people are asking, like Rob Tebbett or Coogan Cassis. We're talking real boxing questions. So when you're gonna come and do it, Eddie? You've got my email. I'm gonna send you my new phone number today. Give me a ring, Eddie. Don't you be a bottle job. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I think today we're going to ring Big V. I like his questions. He, uh, he stimulates my boxing brain like no other. So let's have Big V on. Can I remember to put it on this so it's near the microphone so nobody complains? Because I can't work my Bluetooth. Right, hello there. You alright, mate? How are you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you, Porky? I'm alright, mate. What's been happening? Just been really busy, mate. Yeah? Just been really busy, stressed. Yeah, mate. Just, you know, just work stuff, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. I'm alright mate, I'm alright, just looking at all these IFL interviews on here that are absolute <laughs> Bullshit <laughs> uh, Yeah, I have to come in in the morning and catch up with you, otherwise you can say something on camera um, once you've said something on camera, you can't take it back, can you? Uh, you know, exactly. I mean, obviously, we do, I do make mistakes because I try to do it off cuff, but I do try to keep up with it. But there's that much content out there, and um, it's like sitting in your bed at night, isn't it? I sit in my bed at night, I put my telly on, and there's that much to choose from, isn't there? So yeah. I try to, obviously, because I'm a former drug addict, I try to have a. a a schedule through the day so I keep my mind busy and I don't have time to think about uh, drugs if you know what I mean so yeah, yeah. Uh, or going and getting off my head and you know if I see any of my old mates I like how are you doing all right see you later kind of thing in it but so that's why I have to have a sh I have to have a schedule from yeah. getting up it's a bit like uh, I don't like to go on about this because uh, so my family say oh why do you always mention this and Dennis always mentions this and he cheeses me off but I don't like to mention prison, but when I were in prison, I, I obviously did a lot of time on, on solitary confinement because I were naughty. You've got to fill that day, haven't you? you? You've got 24 hours, haven't you? So you get your hour exercise, take you in a cage like a dog, let you walk around in a circle. You've got another 23 hours to kill, haven't you? So you like read paper, don't you, in segments over the day, you know what I mean? If you, or you read a magazine, or you take your time over a letter, or you do some drawing, so I'd fill my day out like that, like I do now, basically. You know, I try to do my, to fulfill my day out, if does that sound right? So I, that's why I come in in the morning and watch, you know, I put, I, I'm an IFL subscriber, I watch IFL, Boxing Social, I watch it all, digest it all, then I think, you know, I'm, I don't like that. And then I make my notes and then we do a film about it, don't we? about what's happening or I go on boxing scene I try and find out what's happening uh, and that's it but I'm basically more of a critic and I'm correcting the bullshit but uh, that's basically it. it's not hard there's no secrets to this you've got to put your time in you've got to get people to help you as well to do it because it's not 
you know it's not something that you can do your sen so that's yeah. what, how, how I do it and I've watched some stuff this morning I've just done a video that's gone out regarding Dean White obviously that's not his name but he says it is regarding him saying that Eddie Earns failed Dillian White I mean what do you think to that? It's been badly advised over the last few years. Do you think that uh, Gillian White may now have missed the boat? He's 40 next birthday, Pulev. Oh well, yeah, obviously he's going to be knocking on retirement in the next few years, isn't it? And Dillian White loves a 40 year old, doesn't he? Yeah, but why did he, why did he take that, uh, that fight um, in Bulgaria and Hugh Fury had to take it? Well, uh, the, the Dillian White's promoter, Billion Dollar Eddie, had a billion dollars and he lost a purse bid by about a quarter of a million. So he's lost a purse bid by a quarter of a million so he's hardly team Dillian White, is he? He didn't go out on a limb for his man, did he? No, he didn't. I don't, I don't personally think he probably, I don't think he probably likes Dillian to be honest with you. I don't think he does. I think he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a fair wheel, isn't he? Dillian's a spare wheel in battery, my opinion. No, he's not a spare yeah. wheel, he's just a wheel. <laughs> yeah. That's a Geordie saying, isn't it? Because I used to be in prison with some Geordie who say, you know you, Porky, you're a wheel man, you're a wheel. <laughs> we used to take Mickey out of each other. So you're a wheel man. You're a wheel. So Dillian White's a wheel. But yeah, you could say a spare wheel. But he can fight. But since he lost to Joshua, he's won every fight. What, was he 10, 11, and 0 since then? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Is he 10 or 11 and 0 since then? We marked Tibbs, and he's won every fight. We marked Tibbs. So he's delivered, hasn't he? Is since then. Yeah, definitely. Well, so. Yeah. So, so we're happy with the training aspect, aren't we, of how, how uh, it's gone for him. He's won every fight. Yeah, he, he, he looks shaky against Parker, but 
you know, Parker were probably his best win. He knocked Brown out, who were two year out at game, age 45, still on the weight, so I don't really count that. I mean, Dave Allardyce him in three months later, that's where Brown's at. And Brown were a two time drug cheat, wasn't he? So, I don't count the Brown win as a top win. Top win. He's got Povetkin next, he's 41 in September, so he's like fighting Joshua's cast offs, didn't he? Like Povetkin and Parker and Chisora fight, you could say that took a lot out of him, couldn't you? Yeah, I do. I think it put miles on the clock. I do. The amount, the amount, the amount of shots he was taking, was against Chidora and them two fights, Jesus Christ, like, you know, he wasn't that, he took some shots, didn't he? Yeah. Excuse me, I'm yawning a bit here, but not at you, I've had a uh, coffee. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry Simple. You don't have a contract with Eddie Hearn. Take the train. If you're unhappy, yeah, right. consider what you've had sever as severance pay. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road if you're not happy. But don't be getting your PR guy, Dean White, or whatever he's called, to come on there and give it the big licks about Eddie Hearn's not delivered. I'm not an Eddie Hearn fan, as you know. He's delivered for that kid. And he's 33 next, Dillian White. He's the wrong side of 32 now. And he's had, he's got miles on clock. And he were awful in his last fight. They should have fought Joshua. I mean, what are they inboxing for? If any, any manager or advisor worth his soul gets offered 5.5 million or 6 million on the upside, depending on what pay-per-view it did, but look, between five and six million, depending on what targets they hit, it's up to you how you sell fight. This is why they like them to kick off, so they push numbers up, don't they? If you're offered five to six million to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world, the Ali's had, Marciano, Joe Louis, Fury, Larry Holmes, all them people, you're offered that chance to fight a kid who knock you out when you had a bad shoulder because it was only because he had a bad shoulder and he were unfit and all that and he were raw and all this well if you are the finished article and you get offered that at Wembley two London kids going at it in a rematch intense beef and you'll go nah I want to fight Oscar Rivers who don't speak English but yet you didn't want to fight Otis because he didn't speak English where, where are they heading who is advising him do you know what it is though, mate? Um, the reason why he probably didn't take the Joshua fight, oh. I'm talking about the rematch um, clause and all that, and saying that Joshua wanted, you know, all the pie. But you know, I think it was. I think it's because Dylan White deep down probably didn't believe he could beat Joshua. Yeah, and another thing as well, you know that rematch clause that they keep going on about. Andy Ruiz had the same deal, but yet when he beat yeah. Joshua. They played chess with him for more money at rematch. You get what you negotiate. Beat Joshua first, then worry about the negotiations for the rematch. I, I, am I right? You're right, mate. 100%. Why couldn't they do that? Knock him out, then we'll talk. I've got the four belts, I'm in charge. I'm going to want a bit more money. Leave a bit of bread in my mouth, as Eddie Hearn's dad always says. Well, and they would have known that, the Hearns, because they would have done anything to get them belts back. They'd have gone to bed with a python. A snake yeah. or whatever, Eddie would have. So, they'd have done anything to get him back. Like they did with Ruiz, they paid him more money. Ruiz, they got, look, Ruiz negotiated, right? And that's what Dylan White should have done. So, whoever's advising him, and I think it's Dean, they need to put their hand up and go, you know what, I got it wrong. They got it wrong. But they're on their outside looking in now, aren't they? And now they're coming out hammering in. Well, he is. I mean, Dillian's next one. Coogan will be hanging out at the back of him for the next one, and quite rightly so, because it'll do mega views. Dillian White will be ready to explode any day now. Any day. But the brother needs to come out and go, we got it wrong, we were advising him. Or if he ain't advising him, who is? Who is advising him? Costa on the outside looking in now, with a win over Ian Lewinson. 20 stone Ian Lewinson, a vacant British. That's it. That is his career. A spare wheel. 
What do you think? You know, you know what I think as well, though, mate? Like, like you said, you're talking about, you know, take the, take the rematch, obviously beat Joshua, but then if he gets those belts, and obviously, you know, say, for example, he gets, I don't know, in the rematch, five or six million, he don't want that to spin the belts. Because you're the man, then, aren't you? You beat yeah. the man. Yeah, yeah. They didn't obviously have belief to fight Joshua, did they? No, no, no chance. So he no. thought, well, I can still pick up pay-per-view and the Joshua fight's always going to be there. Well, the fight's not always going to be there now, is it? Look, in boxing, the landscape changes. I mean, look what Ruiz did to Joshua. The landscape changed when he took him out. And yeah. look at MTK coming in. The landscape changes all the time. It's an evolving business. But I just think that looking at it from outside badly advised and I'm actually defending Eddie Earn here I and mean, then I can't believe it but Eddie Earn has delivered for them financially he's not got on the belts because they probably didn't want to go for belts I mean Caballel schooled Chisora Dillian's never mentioned his name has he Caballel? No I have never mentioned him never mentioned his name whatsoever don't mention Dubois don't mention Joyce don't mention them, won't go near Louis Ortiz. Might do when he's 44 or something. Doesn't mention their names. Dilly, getting on to Deontay Wilder. Right, Deontay Wilder, Dean White's just said on here. Dillian's been mandatory a thousand days. So if that's true, why didn't they serve papers on Wilder after the 270th day? Because that's the cutoff point for legal action. So for 730 days, his words, and don't forget 730, is two year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Two year, not one legal letter gone to WBC. Not one legal letter. They don't want it. They, don't, they never wanted Wilder fight. They didn't want Ortiz fight. Wilder had to fight Ortiz twice because nobody wanted to fight him. And if truth be known, Wilder didn't want to fight him either, but he were backed into a corner. Do you know what I mean? They had to, they had to put some on for TV because TV weren't interested in all names that they were coming up with. And um, Wilder iced him twice, but he never really won any round, many rounds, did he? Yeah. But he won the both fights by knockout because he got the equaliser. Dillian didn't want that Wilder fight. He refused the Joshua fight when he had it on a plate. Here you are, Dillian. Between five and six million, four belts, Wembley. There you go, I've delivered. Oh, I'm not happy with rematch clause. What? So I don't want to hear anything about... Badly done to and Eddie Hearns failed you. Eddie Hearns delivered. He's getting your pay-per-views coming out your ears. And you had the title shot at Wembley. And you knocked it back. I don't want to hear belly aching, sour grapes, spilt milk, whatever. It's no good crying over spilt sour milk. That's basically it. Anyway, let's go through your questions now. We've wasted enough on them gimps. <laughs> Sweet, mate. I've got quite a few today. Go on, then. Lies. You nobody's lies. nobody's signed anything, have they? No. Joshua has Joshua come out and said anything? No. No, Joshua's not said a word, has he? Oh, we've got a Tyson Fury coming out. He loves loves PR anyway. Would you would you trust Tyson Fury to tell the truth? No. Do you believe anything Tyson Fury says anymore? No, I don't. There you go. Do you believe anything Eddie Hearn says anymore? No, they all the more lies, right? More lies. There you go. So I don't believe it. No, I don't believe it. No. Nope. Just to keep the public interested on their toes about it. Do you know yeah, what plus they need to. Well? Yeah, plus they need uh, to be relevant, and they need to take some sting out of this with Joshua that's on telly at the moment because tomorrow 
it's all going to be out of control isn't it, in London tomorrow let's hope it keeps raining and nobody yeah. goes so alright mate next question what? Um, going back so the heavyweight division is piss poor why is, it, why is it the competition as good as the 70s and 90s I think because nobody wants to fight anybody they all want to have padded records for example Tyson Fury is saying he is the best greatest heavyweight of all time how many world title fights has Tyson Fury won? Two, two. So we've got a man here with two world title wins, but all of a sudden he's the greatest ever of all time. So I never think defended belts either. He's never defended the belts, has he? Never defended belts, no. So, so nobody's saying he can't fight, and, and nobody's saying that he's not the best out there because he is, but. It's a poor era, and like I said, we've got too many belts and too many cooks spoiling the broth. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, Joshua's been yeah. protected, hasn't he? Oh, my main protected fighter in the world, didn't he, Joshua? Yeah, so... Do you know Luis Ortiz hasn't beat a former world champion? Because he can't get a fight with anybody, can he, Luis Ortiz? He's that good. They've had to let him get old, haven't they? He's never beat a former world champion yet. And he's he's the real deal, him. But he's old now. He, he was put. He was signed by Eddie Hearn to keep away from Dylan White and Joshua. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I know that. Everyone knows that. Everyone in boxing industry knows that. They've seen him before. Oh my God! He doesn't sell a ticket. He doesn't speak English. He's old as the hills. But Eddie Hearn wants to sign him. And he's Cuban. Why would Eddie Hearn sign him? Why would he? And he's he not going to sell a ticket. Nobody knows him. He signed him. For a chess move to protect his king and his queen on the chessboard. And that's how boxing works, it's like a chess game. And this yesterday, or the last couple of days, it's like chess. They're throwing it out there to test the public, to see what they think about Joshua. And I've, you've seen what people think about him, they think he's not popular at the moment, is he? Well, you said the World Bank, you said the narrative that they're spinning, there's some newspaper on Facebook now, they're basically. Um they put something like something to do with Joshua Boyd and stuff and doing this and doing that and then all you see in the comment section are people are saying calling him this and calling him that so I think people are doing that they're going to manipulate the media yeah. now to his advantage. That oh, the PR machines in overdrive now on behalf of him. They wheeled yeah. out Mr. Bean, Spencer Fear, and Johnny Nelson and Eddie Earn, didn't they? Straight away, they've all, they've all been wheeled yeah. out, haven't they? Then you've got all the rest of them. Awara Davis, he's been wheeled out, hasn't he? And all the yeah, all other people who are gonna who are gonna want to get on Joshua's shows. I like Awara Davis though. I've met him; he's all right. But people are you gonna. Know, that, go that, guy, that guy, though, to me, Awara Davis, I just think he's. I don't know, like, cause obviously the what what Eddie Earn did to him, I wouldn't want to work with him again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but we're talking he's about boxing, it. Sorry, we're talking boxing, aren't we? People. They'll stick a knife in your back, but if you say, oh, do you know what, we're going to put your kid on our show, they'll say, do you know what, that time you stuck that knife in my back, let's high five, it's only banter, innit, we're trying to sell fight. It's just a bit of hype, it's just PR, innit. Yeah, you stuck a knife in my back, it's just PR. Well, I'm not that type of person. If somebody sticks a knife in my back, I don't want them near me ever again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to be, yeah, it's only banter. No, forget your banter, you knifed me. Do you know what I mean? But that is boxing, isn't it? And Awara Davis would sign for Matchroom again and they'd all be group hugging it, sugar up. And that's just how it goes, I'm afraid. That's just how the industry goes. These people, they're not going to go out and get nine to five jobs. Boxers are a different breed. That's why they deserve respect. They're a different breed. breed. Not A lot of them fall by wayside costs. What are they going to do when they get to 34? So they know in it, so they should stay in boxing and train fighters, put some graft in. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. the, a lot of them don't want to do that, do they? That's why it's a short career, that's why they're going to get as much money as they can. Go oh. cool. on, what's the next question? Uh, Spencer Fear was a decent fighter and okay funded. What's he what, what's better at? Spencer Fear and decent fighter. Well, Spencer Fear never won a belt as a fighter, so that's he's a journey man. Second of all, is a is he a decent pundit? He's he's bias. He's bias, isn't he? If if you if you're paying his wage every week or paying him, he'll say what you want, won't he? 
Just say what David you want. Hey? David Day. You can find the David Day. They're both similar. Very similar, but David Day were a world class cruiserweight, probably the greatest ever cruiserweight him in Holyfield, so he's in that yeah, bucket. Yeah, in terms of like uh, punditry, they're both, for me, they're, they're, they're the same. They're going to push the narrative. If it's if David Day is on BT Sport, Tyson yeah. Fury is best in the world. If he's on Sky Sports, Joshua is best in the world. And that's just how, how, how it is. They're getting paid thousands of pounds to push that company's product. So, speaking of products, shout out to Robin Reed. Multivitamins. If you need to get fit and look like Robin Reed, buy these. It's the only place to go. <laughs> what you were saying? Do you know what? <laughs> did John McDermott live the life of a fighter? Did he, did he maximise his potential? No, he didn't live the life of a fighter, but when he fought Tyson Fury the first time, he schooled him. Yeah. So. What do you think of his career? John McDermott could do better if tried, a bit like my school report in juniors. I think that Usyk's a bit special, a bit more special than Holyfield at Cruiserweight, but when Holyfield fought as a Cruiserweight, it was 13 stone 8, wasn't it? When Usyk fought, it was 14 stone 4, so there's 10 pound difference in, in the weight. So I think I think at 14 stone 4, very close fight, but I think Usyk on points because he was Southport, but I think at 13 stone 8, maybe Holyfield. I'd probably shade it, but they fought it different weights, so I don't think you can class it as the same cruiserweights, are they really? Ten pound difference. Because mm. ten pounds a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like comparing a a middleweight to a super middle. That's eight pound difference, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's different yeah. weights, different era, but great fight. And uh, but the, the different weights, I think Holyfield at thirty stone eight. Oh, second 14 for, and I think at heavyweight, probably Holyfield might just be too big for him, but who knows? Cool. Next question um, Alexander Galactic uh, retired at 33 years old as a boxer. What's your thoughts on that? Thought you were a great fighter. Is that what Teddy Atlas trained? Yeah, yeah, the improved one, the one that fought her. Uh, who's sick? Uh, yeah, I think he's a great fighter. Uh, I think it's a shame that he's gone, but boxing's dead in water at the moment, and these people they can't keep people on payroll, can they? If they're not going to be fighting, so. Cool. Next question: What number would a hardcore boxing fan put Carfrot in the list of all-time great super middleweights, and where would a boxing casual put him? Uh. You liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>